say a beautiful morning but when the sun comes up over those clouds over in the hills of Aguirre here it should be a lot nicer we're over here uh, making up to our light barge we've just pumped more than two million gallons of fuel to the power plant and now the uh, tankerman is getting ready to help us get on the wire and chief is down there and uh, he's gonna help us out Luke is running the He's running the doghouse, I'll be running the wheelhouse. So we've got a double drum winch here, and the idea is that we're gonna set the barge up on a wire, you know, we're gonna bring its bridle over to our towing wire. But in order to do that, because things weigh so much, we have to get the soft line over here on the second winch, what we call the suitcase drum, and that is actually gonna pull his bridle over, because the thing that, you know, the weight of the chain and the fish plate and the pennant and all that sort of stuff is going to be probably over a, a ton or two. And so in order to pull that over, we need a big winch. Now you see the chief right now, he's holding something that's called chafing gear, the black thing right there. And that's because this is the spectral line. This is, uh, I think it's, a, it's part of a Kevlar, like a Kevlar line, but uh, it's uh, very similar to Dyneema. But uh, it, it's susceptible to uh, chafe. So wherever we have any wear points, we put this chafing gear on, which is a, like a sacrificial thing. Now, the, the tankerman is getting the, his pickup line, lifting up his pennant, and he'll shackle that into this line, then we're gonna pull it up here, and then the chief is gonna go and uh, hook it onto the uh, onto our towing cable. So we'll be back with that in a second. Yeah, I got a little rainbow over there. I don't know if you guys, camera picks it up or not? About in there. All right, so they're getting ready over here. Be back when we start pulling that up. Now that he's got it all shackled in our line into his line, he's pushing it over the rail. And you can see ours falls into the, well, when he gets done, it's gonna hang down right now, but he has his line tied off. So he's holding all that weight of the pennant up. He's gonna let it go and you'll see our line go into the water. Luke is heaving up on the suitcase drum, just so when it goes, we all set. The chief has the, uh, chafing gear around the wear point of where it makes the bend around the uh, cleat down there. So now we're just waiting for the uh, tankerman to let everything go. Okay, it looks like... Chief. Watch yourself, Chief! Okay, he's gonna let it go. You can see the... There. He's probably going to go over and grab that big hook. And it seems weird, but the weights involved here are so much that we like to uh, we like to move things with all the help we can get, so we don't have a back injury. And 
the cheek goes all the way around the winch. That's a safety procedure that we do. We never step over the wire, or in this case, the soft line. And if you're wondering, that Dyneema, you see this big heavy wire here? That Dyneema has a, almost two times the braking strength of this, but this is much tougher, so we could never tow on that stuff. Uh, Luke is heaving this in just a little bit to help out the seat a little bit. Sun's almost breaking through the clouds. Now, if I were a good uh, dude, I wouldn't be holding the camera. I'd be down there helping the chief. But he's done this a million times so much, I usually just get in his way. And if you wonder where the a, if you wonder where the AB is, the AB is actually off watch right now. So uh, because of the pace of things and because we got such a good crew here, um, sometimes it's better to have a real tight crew of four than a loose crew of five. So uh, we've opted to go for a crew of four and that, that just means that the chief has to do two jobs and uh, he gets a little stipend for that. And that's, uh, that's good. But down here it kind of makes sense to run with a crew of four. So that's what he does. So he just brought a cotter pin over. You see the nut over there? He's got to put that nut on and he's got to go and uh, put the cotter pin in. But he's got to walk around everything each time he does this because he doesn't want to uh, step over the wire or the soft line. And I don't know if you're getting water on the camera, but it's just starting to spit a little. That's kind of a, uh, that's par for the season around here. So right now Luke is really watching that wire and you see the chief just looked over at that wire and the reason why is that Luke has to make sure he doesn't put that wire in a bad spot because if the wire comes at the chief it have the ability to cut him in half or uh, do some real damage anyway. And we love our chief so we don't want that to happen. So now the chief's lining up the hole and the cotter pin is just a safety thing so that if for some really really weird reason the uh, the uh, bolt were to come undone, the cotter pin keeps it from backing off. So now all we have to do is uh, undo the soft line. So Luke is gonna start either heaving up on the wire or putting out on the soft line. It looks like he's gonna do the soft line. There it goes. Chief pulls a little bit of it out. Now you can see that wire moving. Chief goes over. And we're good to go. So now the next thing is gonna happen is Luke is gonna go and pay out wire and he's gonna get the tug and put the bow of the tug against the barge while the wire goes. And that little hook right there is gonna catch the wire. What I mean is that it'll keep the wire from going over here. The problem with it getting over to the bits is that if it got in between the bits, it'd be very difficult to get it out. So what he's gonna do is right now he's driving ahead and then he's gonna pull the bow in and pay out wire. The socket, the shackle, and the other socket are all gonna go over the side and then he'll start coming out at a 90 degrees from the barge. There we go, that goes there. Now the, the chief is in a relatively safe position because of that, because of that angle there. Uh, you know, that, that little curve is gonna, that protects the chief. And now as Luke comes around, the wire comes up. Luke tries to keep it nice and tight for a couple reasons. He doesn't want to catch the wire on anything that might be on the bottom. And we don't want the wire to get, you know, it's abrasive on the bottom. We don't want any of that. But he also wants to keep tension on the wire. Even though the, the wheels, the propellers are under the Texas bar over here, he uh, does all this stuff so that, that he ensures that he can't get the wire in there. Now all the time that we're doing this, Luke is over there running the boat, running the winch, and there's our assist tug. He's coming around the corner. We just happen, he's not late or anything, we just happen to be a little early. So the assist tug's gonna come around here and he's gonna put a line up over there, uh, you know, head on to the barge. And then once we let all the lines go, Luke will back out around here and get on the wire and away we go and hopefully you'll see all that. Even line goes up. Tank ran 
and starts pulling the heaving line in. Get a little pendant on there, and now they're putting up their headline. Now that he's all made it fast, we'll have uh, Tankerman start letting lines go while the two of us will be holding him in position. So after enough time for the Tankerman to let all the lines go, Luke continues to have the assist tug work and he probably works him up a little stronger because now Luke starts backing away and he he's backing. If you look at him, he's looking, he's watching the wire because he's doing this delicate balancing act between not letting the wire come tight because that would snap him around and pull on the barge, but also not letting it fall down on, on the bottom because he's going to catch that either. So he's spinning the barge around. I'm in the um, I'm in the wheelhouse forward right now. And he's doing all this from back there. Now when he gets all set here, he's getting in position, and he doesn't want to be exactly at a 90 degree angle. He wants to be more. Uh, about 60 degrees or something like that. But right about where he's at now is almost the perfect spot to be. And what he's going to do is when he gets all set, he's going to call the uh, assist tug and he's going to tell the assist tug to start backing. And then he'll start pulling. Right now he's probably just, now he's in position so he, he needs to get up and leg that wire tight. And then he's going to tell the assist tug to start backing and the two of them will pull the barge off. Not only pull it off, but there he is right now. He now as his wire came tight, he just told the assist tug to give him the back of command. And you can see the wires up there, so that way as he's pulling the barge off and the assist tug pulls it off as well, he doesn't have any backwards movement. If there's any movement, the barge will come ahead, and that's really what he wants. He's having the, the assist tug back because if he just pulled on the bow itself, remember that it wouldn't make just the bow come out. The pivot point in the light barge is almost the center of the barge. So the center of the barge would stay relatively static. The bow would come out and the stern would go crashing into the dock. So that's why he has the, the assist tug out there. So right now, he's working in conjunction um, with the assist tug. They're both pulling it off together. And Luke is brilliant at and taking his time. He's got really good patience. A lot more patience than I have. A lot of times uh, I can't resist the temptation to give a lot of thro throttle and get things going. I want to get the job done. And uh, that's definitely not the way to do it. Uh, taking your time and going slow and having, you know, for a, a young guy like Luke and, uh, with where he hasn't been doing it for 30 years, he, uh, he has an unbelievable amount of patience and it really pays off really well for him. So he's pulling it off. Um, unfortunately, I, I mounted the camera up, uh, I, had to, I put it on top of uh, uh, one of the blower vents. So I wasn't able to really see, I had to guess where it was looking. I really should have panned it off to the left a little bit more so you can see what's really going on. But right now, I would assume that's what happened. He's probably handed the steering off to me in the wheelhouse. Now he'll keep the throttles and I will start slowly steering. If I steer right over towards the channel, I'm going to have to bring the barge to starboard quite a bit. In other words, I mean, so I'm going to bring the bow of the tug to starboard a, a, a lot. And by doing that, the wire will go, go way off on the side. So it looks like he's he's taking he's he, they're, they're taking the line in on the assist tug right now. And so when he hands this steering off to me, I need to come over nice and slowly so that we still have the wire over there. And at this point, I should also tell you that it, it, um, while I'm in the uh, wheelhouse, we have a video camera that's showing everything back there. And I noticed that I've made a mistake here. I really should have gone on deck and helped the chief. Uh, we have two donuts. We usually deploy, deploy at least one on either side, sometimes two on the same side. Right now, the two are on the port side, which is the right-hand side of the screen. You can't really see it because it's right about where Luke's head is right now, maybe his shoulder is. But uh, there's nothing there where the wire is 
on the starboard side. It's, there, there's no donut right there. So what happens, um, the, the chief can't lift one of these up himself. I mean, he could probably lift it up, but it's covered in grease. And it's above your head. And neither the chief nor I are great big guys, so the two of us together working in unison could lift one up. And by getting it, we, you know, before, while we were making up to the barge, that would have been the time that we should have put that one on the side. We've been away for three weeks, and so uh, maybe we're all getting rusty. Who knows? But <laughs> anyway, poor Luke. Luke is off, and he doesn't have the donut there to catch. You see where the wire is right now? Right there, it would have fallen right into that donut, and he would have been on the donut, and he would have been all set. So noticing this, I've talked to him on the radio, and I've told him that uh, if, he, if he wants to, he'd have to shorten the wire. And that means like he'd have to haul in on the wire, and then uh, the chief and I could go lift the donut up, and then he could yank on the wire with the winch or with the throttles, get the wire to lift up for a second, and we could move the donut over so the wire drops back in the donut. Or I told him, I said, look, it's up to you. You can do whatever you want. Once we get out in uh, out of the lagoon, and you know, right now we're in the inner harbor, then we go in this lagoon. When we go out outside of the protection of the reef, we'll be in deeper water, and we can round up on the, you know, uh, not round up, but uh, catch the donut there. And uh, that's what he opted to do. And you're going to see that in a little bit. And uh, believe it or not, that's a skill that uh, takes a little while to get used to. So uh, it, it, you think picking up the donut is not a big deal. And I suppose it's not if you have a lot of water to work with. Right here, here because because we don't, we're not, we're, we're in very shallow water here as we're going out. There's many times when we only have 10 feet of water underneath the tug, so the water might only be 20 feet deep. If you were to pull back on the throttles right now, the wire would dip down and touch the bottom, and we don't really want that to happen. So, when we go to uh, pick up the wire, we want to be in deeper wire, uh, deeper water, so we can let more wire out, and you'll see, you'll see how it does it. Get a little closer here. I'm going to uh, shut this part of the video out and get us when we're getting out of the lagoon so we can see how that's done. Okay, so now you can see that the two donuts there are on the port side, and now he's making his move. He comes off to the side, now the part still has waves, so he has to do this relatively quickly. And we're only in about 50 feet of water here, so uh, he's got to do all this, but he's still maintaining the strain on the wire. Now it's up on top of it. Now there he goes. Now, now he gets it, he's uh, releasing some of the strain on the wire, and you would think he could snap the bow back. The problem is, you get, you know, couple hundred tons of tugboat moving in one direction and it really wants to go that way and it takes 20 seconds to reload the, rud the rudder to get the rudder to go the other way. So now he's going to come over, you can see that the wire, he's got enough wire out to hold weight on the, uh, on the, you know, to hold the donut in position. He's good to go. So that's that. Now this is us. Uh, a little while later, we got about three lays out. As you can see, not having the protection of the reef there, things get uh, awfully sloppy. You can see that other donut that we picked up is moving around. Listen, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you like these videos. Uh, you can help me out. Looks like I gotta help myself out and get that bucket. I don't know what that bucket's doing down there. I have to run down there and get that. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching. And uh, if you want to help out the channel, I put all the stuff in the description. You guys take care, be safe, and I'll see you on the way.